Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Channel 9 Live here at Build. It is lunchtime, and what better topic to talk about than chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> we are here with Matt, Rob, and Yosef, and we're here yeah. to talk about uh, some things that we heard yes or, yeah, yesterday, yesterday. In, uh, in the Day 2 keynote, uh, namely Chocolatey and Box Starter. So welcome to uh, Channel 9, excited to have you guys here and learn a little bit more about it. Why don't we quickly introduce both of you and, uh, and Yosef yourself as well, sure. and uh, tell us uh, why you're here. Who are you? Uh, I, I'm Matt Rock, um, I, uh, I, I wrote Box Starter. Okay, great. Uh, I'm Rob Reynolds, I uh, uh, founder of Chocolate Software, I'm the one that started it all about seven years ago, so. I'm Yosef Durr, I'm a PM lead on uh, a few developer tools. And uh, Yosef works okay. on uh, WSL as well. We're supporting That's right. Our, we got our, our WSL, WSL shirts on. Yeah. yeah. So it's great. That's right. So, okay. So I know what Chocolatey is. I was there from the beginning. I've used it before. I don't know what Box Starter is. Uh, help me understand what the relationship is. Where do they work? Um, maybe let's start with, maybe people don't know what Chocolatey is too. So maybe let's start, Rob, with you can just give us, a, like, what is Chocolatey? What is it sure. for us? Uh, so we can do the, the, the quick. So uh, Chocolatey is uh, basically software management for Windows or package management, some people want to say. And uh, so, uh, you know, it can go for, you want to get some software installed. Uh, it really allows you to rapidly do that, right? And then be able to uh, also upgrade it very rapidly and just, you know, continue to make sure that you have that software uh, up to date, and it goes beyond programs and features, right? So it's like all aspects of Windows software uh, are first-class citizens with Chocolatey. So it's your zips, your scripts, your runtime binaries, oh yeah, and your installers too, right? And so it, it does all of that, it manages it, uh, you get the good reporting, all that good stuff. So. That's awesome, and so how does Box Starter come into play here then? So, so you can kind of think of Box Starter as a wrapper around um, Chocolatey. Oh, I didn't even think, I didn't even plan that, a <laughs> Chocolatey wrapper. Um, <laughs> but uh, they just, yeah, they we'll be here all week spontaneously, people. yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> I, I, when I initially wrote Box Starter, what I, so I, that was actually inspired by a hard drive failure. And um, I'm sure we've all had the experience where, you know, we're working on our dev box and then just like sudden death. Um, and like, for example, two weeks ago, my motherboard died on my personal laptop. That was a bit of a bummer. So. So you're in a situation um, where you need to rebuild your box, and if you're in the business, um, you know, if you're a if you're a developer, that's productivity, right? That's right. Um, that's you know hours, days, possibly um, of time, not only um, going through the process of the next next finish, um, but also just trying to remember like what do I click next next finish on? Um, and so around this time, I thought you know honestly, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way where I can just launch a screen and just come back and have everything be there. And like every software developer, you started writing the better way. Uh, right, 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 exactly. Right? Yeah, right. totally. Yeah, yeah. It was gonna. It was that or a blog. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, so at any rate, um, so at the, the, around the same time, I discovered Chocolatey. I remember, like, this is like 2012. I had discovered Chocolatey months before. Just didn't quite get it, and now I like totally got it. And, and so Chocolatey gave me exactly what I needed to install individual pieces of software. But what I needed on top of that, I needed SQL Server. I needed Visual Studio, and, and especially it's, it gets better each year. But back in 2012, you know, there's three reboots yes. right there. Yeah. Um, so you, I had to, you had to go find those things. You got to go download them. Yeah. Right. You got to find. Well, so that's what cho chocolate takes care of that for you. Right. Um, so, but but then what 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 wasn't being taken care of is is there a pending reboot? You know, so if I do a, a chocolatey install Visual a Choco install Visual Studio, is it going to fail because there's a pending reboot, um, or right. uh, you know, is my, is my machine in this? And, and, and then I. I had to be there to reboot my machine, to log on my machine. Okay. So basically what Box Starter does is it wraps, it wraps around a bunch of chocolatey installs um, and allows you to, it basically detects reboots and can actually automatically reboot your, your machine. So you literally can walk away, <coughs> have a cup of coffee or have dinner or maybe sleep at night <laughs> and come back and have your machine be the way that, that you want it to be. Okay, that's great. So. Yesterday we saw uh, mentions in the keynote. Uh, maybe Yosef, you could tell us, yeah. wh what is this collaboration with Windows and Chocolatey? Yeah, really the, the driver for this is uh, a few things. Um, for, for myself as a developer, uh, I, I get tired of having to set up machines, and mm -hmm. this is a great, uh, a great suite of products here that the, these guys in the community have built, 
And so we want to recognize that. And so using build as a, as a time to recognize this. Um, the other thing is, uh, to give an example, I was at a Node, Node conference last fall, and people are spending too much time setting up their Windows machines. Um, you know, it, it was a new space for them to make their first pull request to Node con to contribute to it. Yeah. And, then, and for me, it was like, well, that doesn't need to be that way. Let's go fix this. And, um, and so this is about really collaborating on making it so we can get out of the business of setting up machines and, and really focus on the work once we're, we're up, up and running. Especially in this world now where we have so many interesting tech stacks and, and sessions that, that we're looking at, and we shouldn't have to pay the tax of learning the setup process for that stack. We should be able to just click once, grab a coffee, come back, and go do the hello world of that stack. Um, and so that's, that's where I see this going, and, and the collaboration, um, it should be a lot of fun and, and, and very rewarding, I think. And we've talked a lot about like you know um, the message that we've talked about from Windows developer perspective is that Windows is the great dev box for everyone. That's right. Right. Um, we you know we briefly mentioned WSL and things That's like right. that. But you know having as we think about uh, developers, and I'm sure Rob, when you started Chocolate, like this was the problem you were trying to solve, right? As developers, yeah. you're like, well, yeah, I need my core IDE, but I also prefer this thing and this library, and I want it this way. And by the way, I need these four other things and. You know, and then you get your sweet new machine. You're like, oh, you got to repave or whatever, and it's like, I got to go do all that crap again. You know, and sure. so that's, you know, I've had those experiences before, and so everyone has their own personality of what their dev box means and what their productivity tools. Mean. Absolutely. And yeah. now you guys provide a means for us to more quickly get that. That's right. Now, can I through Chocolatey? Can I'm an organization. Now, mm -hmm. let's say I have a a specific uh, perspective on what my org's dev box machine will be. Is that something that I can kind of configure as like an Uber script and kind of manage a little bit better? Maybe I manage it through Box Starter. How how might that work? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Chocolatey in an organizational context is maybe a little different. Uh, the the what you see at Chocolatey.org, we have a community repository, right? It's got all these packages that are maintained and moderated by uh, our community. Uh, when an organization is using Chocolatey, typically they're going to set up their own internal repository. They're going to create packages there. They may pull some packages from that community repository, go through this process that we call internalization, uh, where they basically they'll, they'll remove all internet need uh, for those packages at runtime. So because those packages on that community repository are in a public domain, right, or not public domain, they're in the public, so they're, uh, they get subjected to distribution rights, copyright law, so they can't always contain the software that they right. you know, represent. And so Line they have to reach out, apps, you know, yeah. download it from the internet at runtime. And uh, when you're an organization and, and you're, you're doing stuff, you want you want to have everything inside, right? You don't want it to reach out to the internet at runtime. You want more reliability, right? And so uh, they typically, they set it up a little differently. And so, yeah, they could absolutely set up a uh, box starter, point it to the inside. Uh, they could use Chocolatey uh, with that. They could use it with other tools as well. So SCCM, uh, or I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> um, and uh, or, or Puppet, Chef, Ansible, uh, Salt, uh, all those different types of configuration uh, management type things, but also really anything that can run scripts can direct Chocolatey, can direct you know Box Starter to do what it does. That's really fantastic. So we're here again talking about Chocolatey and Box Starter on Channel 9 Live. Be sure to submit your questions, log in and ask a question. You can ask a question uh, uh, below from the stream here as also uh, send it to us at, uh, at CH9 on Twitter. Why don't we uh, take a look at a, a demo and see how some of this works, if that's okay. Oh, sure, yeah. And we just happen to have a computer here. Let's do a demo. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Um, and just, you know, if, if I may, to, just to tie in on, on that kind of that um, that organizational yeah. scenario, too. So, you know, to be clear, when I wrote Box Starter, I was writing Box Starter for, for, for me um, and, my, and my fellow developers. Um, and uh, the great thing about Box Starter is I wanted to be super simple. Like, I wanted there to be, like, very little learning curve. Um, so Boxstarter does a great job of setting up my personal um, laptop. It might not do a great job of setting up my fleet of servers. And you know, so like Rob mentioned, you know, there's there's other tools out there that work great with Chocolatey. Um, you know, so I, I personally work for Chef Software, um, and we, you know, so we work great with we work great with Chocolatey and setting up a, a, a fleet of Windows boxes. You know, Rob used to work for Puppet, and um, so, um, but this is it, but let's dive into you know what yeah. is this like you know, so yeah. I want I want to get something set up on my dev box so there's a, there's a um, 
there's a multitude of, of different types of scenarios. So as I, as I mentioned, the, the, the key scenario for me personally as I was writing Box Starter is I am coming to fresh o OS, right? Like, I'm, like all I have is, a, is an operating system and now I want to put everything on there and walk away. And everything could be um, a collection of chocolatey packages. It could also be some other things. I have some ways that I want to personalize my machine. Um, so for example, I want to set up my um, uh, Windows Explorer to show me all of the folders. You know, not just you know. I want to see, for example, I want to see program data. I don't get okay. that by default. Yeah. I want to see file extensions. Yeah, um, I want Windows updates to install. So let's actually take a look at. Um, are we seeing my screen? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so. So what we're looking at here is the GitHub project that was uh, announced the other day. And so let's take a look at some of the sample scripts. And, we're, and what we're looking at here is the GitHub project that um, is part of this collaboration. That's right. Kind of identifying a, a, a is it a, is, so how should I think about this script? Is it a chocolatey yeah. script? Is it a box so starter this is basically script? A, this is basically a repository of box starter scripts. And so you bring okay. up a great point, like what, what do you mean box starter script as opposed to chocolatey script? Right. So, so to be clear, a box starter script is a chocolatey script. Um, so when you create, a, and, and what is a box starter script? It's exactly this, let's look at one. So it's PowerShell, it's 100% PowerShell. Um, and not only, am I, not only can I call PowerShell commandlet, so here I'm doing some registry tweaks up here, but I also have access to the Choco, um, to the chocolatey CLI um, Got it. That, I'm, okay. th that I'm calling here. So basically anything that I can do on a command line, I can do in this, in this script. That and we're, so what that we're, we're looking, looking at, at here in this particular script, you mentioned the File Explorer one, and I see that on the screen. Um, yes. The, the set item property. So these are mm -hmm. uh, PowerShell commandlets um, that are basically running, or that you are executing in this context, um, and then followed by, there was some just straight up Choco install. Commands right, exactly. Like, oh, and then, then go get me this software. Yes. So figure my machine this way and yes. go install these things. And like at the, so at the very end, the other thing that we do is we install Windows updates. And as some of us know, so, so here, I, what I'm going to show we is. We don't have time for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, don't, we absolutely don't have time for it. Um, and uh, so on a Windows 10 box, yeah, there's going to be a lot less updates. Uh, if you're doing a Windows 7 box, yeah, it's, right. uh, it's a multi hour, um, perhaps. Now, that brings up a good experience. point. The, the one thing that this setup doesn't do is, well, I, it's a question. Uh, it doesn't install NOS. It does not install. The so this is the not assumption a is I'm starting from an, an installed right. operating system. Exactly. That yeah. Domain join maybe, or I don't know. Do, can I run a script that does domain you join? Could, and you stuff you too? could you could do, do domain join, but the, yeah, this does operate under the assumption that you have a, a, an operating system. I'm so logged could, in, and I'm like now I'm right. Getting so this could be a, a tool in your provisioning um, stack, but it's not the entirety of your provisioning okay. stack. Yeah, you okay. still need to, 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 to raise up an OS. So, what, so, what so that's a look at the script. And so yeah, uh, so let's take a look at, th at this script real quick. So this one's, th you know, this can be a, as big or as small as you, as you possibly want. So this is doing some, some tweaks to the, to the Windows Explorer. It's going to install Hyper-V. So, so this can install, um, so you can notice that you have a source. There's, a mul there's, a, there's, there's several different sources of chocolatey packages. The default will be to just pull off chocolatey packages from the community feed. Okay. Uh, which would be, a n but, but this is a special source, Windows feature. So I can basically give it, this is exactly, basically these are the exact same string or token that I would feed to, uh, for s some users out there might be familiar with DISM, for example. Right. Um, yeah. That's exactly that's set up assistant. Exactly, that's what this is doing underneath the hood. It's setting up it's it's setting up these Windows features. Um, it's going to install Visual Studio, the community community edition of uh, uh, 2017. Um, Sys internals, uh, which are a great set of <coughs> tools by. Uh, uh, Founded by Mark Rosinovich, yep. um, and it's going to um, install Windows updates and, and Microsoft updates. And, and, and these Windows features here that that we sh see here uh, being through the the chocolatey installer, are those things that Microsoft provided? Are these Microsoft provided packages? Yeah. So these are basically part of the operating system. So okay. if I was on a let's say a Windows Server, um, you know, 2016 box, uh, and I w had a PowerShell command, I could say, you know, add dash Windows feature and give it this string. Um, the, the, the tricky thing about that is, is that there's a different way of calling that specific command on different Windows operating <laughs> systems. So you ah. might call it one way on Windows 16, you know, in PowerShell, you might call it an another way on a Windows Windows 10, because Windows 10 doesn't have, it has basically, they, they, there's a, they're actually different strings. And so one thing that... So um, here's the benefit of 
chocolatey. Right, it will do that the, detection for the, you. The package has all the information, the metadata, and so now I just say, I don't really care. I just know I need this thing. Yeah. Give me this thing. And chocolatey kicks in and is like, okay, well, I know I know you're this guy, and that thing here is over here, or whatever this config and stuff like that. Right, right. So, so, the, so the, the, the onus is on the author of the, the chocolatey source to make sure that I put all those necessary configurations. Is that correct? Right, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. Know, this script that we're looking at here, it's up to you, um, or the person that's that's handing handing it to you. It's not up to Boxstarter or Chocolatey um, to write this. This okay. is something that, that 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 you would author your would author yourself. Um, so the next question is: So what do I do with the script? I have the script. Um, it, it says how to how to set things up. And so one of um, when I was writing Boxstarter, one of my goals was I didn't want to have to. You know, the idea was I wanted to hop on a box on a brand new box and just go, basically. Just run it. Um, and so what Boxstarter does is it also includes a, um, it's a click once installer, basically. Okay. So you can es essentially invoke Boxstarter with a URL. Um, that URL will invoke a click once installer that will install a very small um, executable that will essentially then pull down uh, several Boxstarter PowerShell modules. It will also install um, uh, the chocolatey uh, library, um, so all the guts of chocolatey that, right. that, that can uh, install packages for you, um, and it'll install uh, .NET 4 for whatever reason that's, that's not on there, um, and, and you're good to go. So literally, all I have to do, what I, what I, so what I could do is, um, and what we provide here, what's provided here in the README, is I could literally click on one of these links and let's take a look at this so link. So these are some of the examples. Right. Right, exactly. So like let's say a, um, let's so say this desktop just, app. Okay, desktop you know, app. So uh, let's let's deconstruct this link here real quick. So and so th this brings up a good point. I, I think I heard the answer, but I'm, I'm going to ask you explicitly. Like, I remember when I started using Chocolatey, like, mm -hmm. one of the challenges, right, you repave your box, like, with package managers, challenge one is you need the package manager, right? It's not yeah. convenient until that's there. And sometimes that can right. be... You know, uh, a challenge, or you know, I got to go get the thing. Maybe I don't have internet connection at that time. I don't know. I forgot what it is and stuff like that. So, um, is this is what I'm hearing? Is you saying is like these URLs provide a way to kind of bootstrap getting me that package manager guts, and then allow me to yeah, then start executing things on top of that. That's it, that's exactly it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, hats off to, to Rob. I mean, he's done a great job with, with. I mean, it's super simple to install the chocolatey CLI. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. it's like a, it's yeah. like one. Two, two lines. We took a line from Homebrew on that guy. So <laughs> they had the whole download something and then right, you know, right. invoke it so that it can actually do the installation. Yeah. Is the convenience is only there with package managers once it's there, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Right now, go ahead. Well, the, the nice thing with the this, this script project on GitHub is we're, we're, we're using the affordance that they've created so that it really is one click. Even if you haven't installed Boxstar or Chocolatey yet, the one click and you just hit yes, and it goes and it runs, and it's, you know, hands-free. That's that's the beauty of it. I yeah, think. yeah. So let's k maybe let's kick off an install, yeah. and then while while that's working, we can answer some questions. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So um, so I've got a, there, there's there's a simple way and a, and a more involved way. So we'll start off with a simple way. Let's say I already know that there's a specific package. Maybe I have a a specific package that I've actually uploaded to the Chocolatey community uh, that I know I want to uh, install directly on my machine. Um, so what I can do basically is I can um, uh, it's, was, is I can basically say HTTP Oh. So I can essentially do this. I can say boxstarter.org slash package slash, uh, what the NR is for no reboot. So by default, what Boxstarter will do is as it's installing software, it'll be before each step it'll say, is there a re pending reboot? Um, oh yes, there is a pending reboot. I'm going to reboot the computer. Um, it'll ask, it'll prompt you for your credentials and, and so it'll log in with those credentials. Now, if I'm here, like right now, I don't want my computer reboot, right? Because yeah. here we are Please and that don't. would be kind of disappointing. Yeah. Um, um, so I can basically force Boxstar to say, hey, just I'm not interested in reboots today. Um, now, I don't have Firefox on this machine, and I would love to have um, 
Firefox. Now, I could, I could be pointing to a package that has a whole bunch of different installers, or I could just be pointing to an individual package. So in this case, just to illustrate like kind of just how the basic mechanics works, I'm just going to say, hey, install Firefox. And this is going to be just right on my personal laptop. Now, I've already hit that. And, the, and so the next thing that happens is this box comes up. So I pause, pause things here. Um, and so this is, you know, if you're- This if is you're, the click once. This is the click once. So if you're familiar with click once installers, um, you'll, you'll recognize this. And so I'm going to say, yes, please go ahead and run. And, um, so now what it's doing is it's installing box starter. So it's basically, th this is, it's just simply grabbing a collection of PowerShell modules um, and, uh, and, and pulling them down. And, uh, as and, I, and I see you have signed your Quick Once installer, so thank you for that. Yes. Number one. Yes. Um, in the process it will be, on that yeah, that, that will, process so on yeah, that. it has been, I mean, it's interesting that you write that because, so, so one thing that we've done, and we'll talk about this in a bit, is we, we're moving Box Starter into the Chocolatey org. So oh. eventually this will actually okay. be under the, um, uh, under the, the, the Chocolatey code signing um, certificate and, uh, um, so that'll be uh, that'll be nice because let me tell you, maintaining those certificates uh, as tough an individual, work, yeah. it's not so tough well, work. It's just a pain in the butt if you want if you want a free one. Let's just say yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, so while this is finishing, let's let's make sure we get some uh, questions here from the audience. So so Manfred is asking, uh, when is the management UI due? Is there a, is this a community thing? People have been buzzing for chocolatey management I'll take UI. That. No, I'll take that. Uh, so. Um, you know, we have the open source edition of Chocolatey, and uh, then we have some commercial side stuff, and one of those is Chocolatey for Business. Uh, his question is about um, the, the management UI, or what we call Chocolatey Central Management. This is a place, so one of the big things you see is, yeah, I got all of this different fleets of uh, machines that I need to deploy to, but I have no central way of reporting on all of that information. So this is about collecting all of that into one place, so I get a one-stop shop to go say, okay, I can see all of this software on my on all of these different machines. And I can kind of bubble up the ones that are uh, you know maybe out of date uh, or whatever, so I can actually then uh, action these types of things, right? And uh, so the central management aspect has that, and it also has a bit of deployment in it. So if you need to do like uh, you know phase deployments, schedule deployments, all that stuff, that's all going to be wrapped into this uh, central management um, website services and all that. And so it's kind of funny because uh, we have uh, the agent service, right? So Chocolate itself is just a CLI, right? Uh, it only runs when you call it, uh, but then we have the Chocolate agent and that is a, it's a, you know, on each box, it's running all the time. It's going to be doing that reporting back and forth. And the, uh, the master services, or we, we didn't want to call them like Chocolatey masters. And so right now we're, we're thinking- call them Willy Wonkas. We're thinking like of calling that. them uh, chocolatiers, master chocolatiers, that's right? And so chocolatiers, that's, I like you, that. You add all those in and that's how you scale, right? Because then all that brings all that information into one place and works back and forth with all of those different clients, right? So at, at current point, uh, the performance is, is about 10,000 different clients can check into one of those master chocolatiers. So uh, that's what's coming. So it's uh, coming, being worked on. We've been working on it for a while. Uh, we were really bad at estimating software, right? <laughs> Uh, you're always pretty bad at estimating, so yeah. um, we just want to make sure it's good to go and it's really performant when it comes out that awesome. first time. And so we've started uh, to get it wrapped up so that we can actually get uh, you know a limited beta out to some select customers, so they can actually take a look at it. You know, make sure that you know we're addressing some of the, the big issues, and then start to give us really good feedback. So then we can start making it better. That sounds uh, good. So that's what that is. Awesome. Okay, Alan is asking: Can Box Starter change machine name, join domain, set up firewall rules, etc.? So Box Starter can do basically anything that you can do in PowerShell. So um, and, and and really, tr uh, you know, chocolate, chocolate is, do the, same is, thing? is yeah. the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so Box Starter, you know, just to be clear, Box Starter is a chocolatey script. It just it wraps it up. So one thing that, for example, so let's take domain, domain joining uh, as an example, um, which so would be a re reboot situation. Exactly right. So one of the tricky things about domain jo joining is you have to um, reboot. I'm sure. With, with the next version of Windows, they'll fix that and you won't have to reboot yeah. it anymore. Really looking forward to that, <laughs> thanks. Um, but uh, um, but it, so, so the trick is, is you know, like I say, you can do it in, um, anything you can do in PowerShell, you can do it chocolatey. You just have to write, so you have to write your PowerShell accordingly. So basically you have to say, um, am I, not, am, am I no, domain joined? No, I'm not. Go ahead and domain me, go ahead and join me to the domain. And um, what you can do is you can call, uh, Box Starter exposes a, um, a command where you can restart your computer. Um, you would do that instead of actually running the restart-computer command.
command. I see. Because if you do that, then box starter doesn't know that you're restarting the, the command and it won't actually. Using using your API, let's call it, it basically yeah. now now box starter kind of becomes in control of the chocolatey flow and the, those type of things. Right, right. So yeah. for example, it'll um it'll it'll you know log you it'll log you back on and so you might okay. have a whole bunch of other stuff that has to happen after you join the domain. Like you might not be able to have access to to your network shares until okay. you join the domain. So that might have to go up at the very top of your script, but as long as you have a guard around that script saying, am I domain joined? And yes, I am domain joined. It'll skip that, and it won't do that reboot. Awesome. Um, and it'll just go on with the Yeah, with that the sounds rest. great. Yeah. So Rob, you mentioned uh, briefly, you said, hey, soon Chocolatey Box Starter are going to be the same thing, same, help us understand what, what's on the horizon here. What's on the horizon? Okay, so, um, you know, a while back, uh, we started talking about uh, bringing Box Starter under Chocolatey, talk with Matt, uh, to kind of continue that development, continue uh, making sure that it stays as awesome as what Matt has, uh, you know, brought to us and uh, you know brought to the community. And so uh, we brought it under. Uh, I think we've uh, now brought in uh, you know, a little bit more security, uh, starting to add in all those things that you know, uh, you know, a company that can that can handle that would take over. And so Chocolatey Software is, is now taking over Boxstarter, and we're we're starting to put more into it just to make sure that you know. All that stuff is signed. Everything is good, so that people can actually, you know, in corporate environments especially, put a little bit more trust in, in that stuff. That's so. great. It's good to see uh, the marriage of the two worlds kind of yeah. being more tightly integrated and, and that type of thing. So that's so I'm getting old, Tim, and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I can't do this at two o'clock in the morning anymore. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, there was, those are some good days, yeah. but. Uh, yeah. And then <laughs> the, the the benefit is like, are both of these are open source. Projects, That's right. That, These are open correct? source. So. Uh, Boxstarter will say open source. I don't believe in taking something away from the community, right? So that's going to continue to be open source. And are you seeing a lot of community uh, contributions to the core itself, or is it more about scripts and? So we see a lot of community contributions in the way of packages on the, the, okay. the community repository. Uh, we have moderators. Uh, they typically help out. And that's all volunteer for the most part. Uh, and. That's where we see a lot of the contributions because there's a there's a lot of w software and neat tools out on Windows. Like I, mm -hmm. when I started all of this, I thought, you know, it'd be great uh, if we had like this nice place that people can go and discover things. Like I don't want Adobe Reader, or maybe I do, uh, but maybe there's other options out there. And if I went somewhere and searched, right, is there a place I could go and I have to worry about ads or any of this other stuff that's trying to get me to other things? I can just say, get to the core of this, find something that's useful, and then use that, right? And so that's. Uh, you yeah. know, one of the things, because you know, like Matt uh, and other developers, we don't sit down and have like a stock machine, right? We we saw all kinds of fun stuff right. on it. Right. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of that that aspect. Awesome. Yep. So we got about two minutes left. Yes, if you mentioned, yeah. okay. So we got the GitHub project, and we got um, you know a repository of some of the the Windows Dev setup script. It looked like you know categorized of like, hey, machine learning. Here's like a set of things. That's right. This is a start. It's a start. So you know, what are you looking for? Which so I'm I'm excited about one um, more scripts, like seeing that list grow, and then really diving into what else we want to do with these. And so like a couple examples is. We just we've just enabled so you can do a command line install of a distro for WSL, um, and so you saw in the sample script that you can turn on the the Windows subsystem for Linux optional feature, um, but we also are enabling install of the distro. The well, next step of that. The right. next step of that. Well, the next step after that is I want to go in and install tools in that WSL distro. So let's let's work that out. And awesome. so we have this collaboration. And we can go figure this out. I, you know, I'm optimistic. And then there's a, there's a bunch of other things, and I'd love the community to come in and say we want it to do this, we want it to do that, and then we we iron out who who can make those contributions, whether it's you know um, teams on the on the particular tools or or whatever. So that's awesome. that's, that's what's exciting. Follow the community, contribute more scripts. That's right. Tell us what you need on both sides, right? What oh, yeah. features? And oh yeah, absolutely. Like so what's the uh, with the remaining time we have, real quickly, what is it, if people are just now hearing this, they're excited, where do they go to get more information? How do they get started? Well, uh, so there's the, the Microsoft yeah. repository, but uh, you can start at chocolatey.org. Uh, right. That'll get you there. Chocolatey.org. Boxstarter.org. That's Box another starter. place. Awesome. Yep. And then uh, the GitHub repo has a short URL, which is aka ms dev setup. aka.ms slash dev setup. Yep. And uh, actually, that has links to chocolatey and Boxstarter uh, yeah. as well. So. Yeah. For sure. Well, great. Well, thank you guys for uh, joining us here at Build. It's great to see uh, the recognition in the keynote. Um, very, very useful tool for developers. Hopefully, we can get some more contributions for 
a bunch of different unique uh, scenarios and things like that. And then, uh, congratulations for a lot of this hard work. It's, uh, it's a very hel helpful tool for developers on Windows. Yep. So appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. And we will have more here at Build uh, coming up. Stay tuned for more on Channel 9 Live. Coming up next is the IoT show uh, with Olivier and crew here from Build. Thank you.